man, it's me, Kevin Smith, coming to you to talk about Peacemaker, the new show on HBO Max by James Gunn. Oh my God. Um, I can't uh, give a show higher praise than this. Yes, it is the Cursing Superhero Show, which rocks. But it's so much more. Gunn takes a character from Suicide Squad, uh, played by John Cena, who was funny in the movie. Um, He's got that rap about, you know, he'd eat a, uh, if this beach was full of dicks, I'd eat them all for, you know, for peace. Um, He proved very deft with the material. He looks like an action figure. I mean, I hate to bring it down to the aesthetics, but like, my God, he literally looks like, like a DC character. And so you squeeze him into that Peacemaker outfit, pitch perfect. Looks like he belongs on a blister card, for heaven's sakes. Um, the character itself came from Charlton Comics back in the day, the same people who gave us um, the, uh, the question, um, Captain Adam. In fact, when Alan Moore, uh, DC Comics picked up the Charlton characters, Alan Moore came up with a pitch for the characters where he's like, I'm going to tell a story about like, you know, deconstructing them as heroes and and how like life is different in the present. And DC was like, ah, we just picked up these characters. Maybe we want to use them for other things. Can you make your own characters? And then he rewrote it as the Watchmen. So Peacemaker was, uh, was the model for the comedian from the Watchmen. So this character has been around for a red hot minute. He's new to some people because he's new in the DC movies. Um, and not a character that most people ever would have thought to use. Using him in Suicide Squad was brilliant because he is a guy who you can portray as like, he'll stop at nothing. He'll kill everyone just for peace. He's telling a story in the genre that hasn't been told before. Telling a grown-ass story using like action figures for heaven's sakes. Would have been so easy for him to smashy smashy them into each other and just have them curse at each other. But instead, he's telling a, a story with action figures with toys that have a real human soul and heart to him. So, uh, as we saw in Suicide Squad, Peacemaker was uh, fucked up pretty badly by the end of the movie. Like, you thought he was dead, but then in the PS, they were like, this motherfucker ain't dead. He's going to work. And they were setting up the series, which uh, it, I guess James came to them with before they were he was done working on the movie. So, he knew he could keep the story going, um, it, you know, Peacemaker kills Rick Flagg, which is like such a piece of shit move. Rick Flagg was about to expose, you know, Project Starfish and whatnot, and Peacemaker kills him because he says, like, that's his mission. Amanda Waller says, you know, the, don't let the information get out. And as Rick Flagg is dying, he says, Peacemaker, what a joke. And this whole series is about, you know, Chris, the Peacemaker himself, Christopher Smith, no relation whatsoever. Um, becoming the person that he was, that he thought he was. Uh, He was kind of a joke. Um, And he's going to learn to live with that or change that. We're going to see an arc, a human arc, with a doll, kids, with an action figure. Um, Basically, uh, Gunn gets to fire his fully loaded gun, if you will. Um, at family relationships. Look, you can have the best writer in the world, don't matter if you don't have performers who can't pull off the material. And oh my God, he's got a great cast here. Uh, number one, John's wonderful in the, in the lead role. Uh, uh, Harcourt, played by Jennifer Holland, absolutely great character, wonderful foil, tough as nails. Having uh, the great Steve Agee on a show on a regular basis. It was delightful to see him in Suicide Squad. Seeing him, you know, on a weekly basis in Peacemaker, get to show off his chops, his acting chops. He's a funny guy, but he also gets to show off his dramatic chops as well. And his his judo chops as well, literally. Uh, Shikuti Awuji, I hope I'm getting that right. Um, Playing Mern, um, who, keep an eye on Mern in episode four. Um, Wonderful supporting cast uh, of, of, Peacemaker's team. Then there's Peacemaker's best friend. Uh, Freddie Stroma is playing Adrian Chase, the vigilante, who in comics has a very tragic story, particularly ending. Um, in, in this, he's an absolute delight. 
And the two of them together, John and Freddie, bounce off each other incredibly well. Really legit funny dialogue that they're doing. Danielle Brooks playing Leota, the other beating heart of this show uh, that's right kind of there with, with Peacemaker. Feels like it's their story together. And they have this sweet, unlikely relationship um, that both actors are pulling off expertly. And Nut Lee as, as Judo Master is wonderful and hysterical. Um, that watching him square off against Peacemaker is just visually pleasing. Uh, but also like a fun character. Always eating chips. I identify with that guy right away. Um, so crazy great cast even got you know a little bit of Amanda Waller in there on the down low that was pretty fucking sweet too um I can't wait to see where it goes in the future man I hope they get another season I hope they get many seasons because if you're if you can tell this story um, with these characters in season one sky's the limit man so he's telling a, a, a story of how do you deal with relatives and or in this situation parents who are larger than life and whose views are different than yours and but your blood and can you love somebody that that's that big a piece of shit like this is deep cut stuff kids in a show that spun off of suicide squad which was a movie that like again something i love had a giant starfish in it so it's gruesome like you know the effects are gory the fights are fun and legit the violence is uh, like cartoonish mayhem. Um, it doesn't shy away from being exactly what it is. Like I'm shocked at how much they get away with on the show. Like there's a lot of very non-PC stuff going on in the show, but in the context, it works absolutely perfectly. If anything, it shows you what's capable, what kind of storytelling is capable. Um, you know, years ago, if you were going to make this as a movie, people would be like, who is this for? And they wouldn't make it. Thankfully, the folks at HBO Max are like, you know who's going to like this? People that like, like quality storytelling. Let's, let's make it and let people find out about it. And I hope people find out about it, man. They're, how can they not? James Gunn making the DC universe, you know, a place that you don't want to see go. And doing it with toys that Zach put in motion. Like, it's a beautiful thing, man. Um, in a world where, you know, you don't get a Snyderverse, this is pretty damn close. He's still playing in it. Um, but yet making it his own, uniquely his own. James has always been a wonderful writer. And uh, it shows in Peacemaker. I was lucky enough to, you know, I watched the first three when they dropped like everybody else, and then I got uh, to watch the fourth episode early so you know sometimes I pull strings sometimes I use what I've put together in this life from fucking scratch kids and yes I call in favors and be like can I see a fucking thing early and nine and a half times out of ten they don't get back to me but this time they were like yeah you can watch episode four early even better they gave us a clip a preview of episode four which we're going to show you right now this is what's going to happen in the episode that's dropping this week, tomorrow, I believe. So let's take a look right now. A sneak preview of Peacemaker, episode four. Check it out. Listen, uh, I've been meaning to thank you for allowing me to be tortured last night. You're welcome. You know, I would, for a minute, I was, I was kind of PO. Like you didn't care about the fact that I was in, you know, agonizing pain. Okay. Yeah, but then I realized you were you were just supporting me and helping me to become the best me that I could be, someone who doesn't spill the beans while being electrocuted and having half his toe cut off. You seem to be walking okay. Well, I'll probably never walk as good again. But it's worth it, you know, for being a more evolved human being, so. Thank you. I've never had a friend quite like you. What? It just seems like under the surface you're kind of angry about it. I'm not. Seems like you are. Well, I'm not at all, dude. Okay, the way you said dude right there? What? Seems miffed. I said it like I always say it. You know what? If anything, you should be grateful. 
because you would feel really guilty if I gave that guy information because you were too much of a candy ass to take a little torture. Oh yeah, I would have been real guilty. You see, that, that right there was angry. No, it wasn't, it was normal. I was, I was agreeing with you. Come on, man. Like, that is my kind of speed. Like, I love that. That's my vibe right there. Oh my God, that's some pitch perfect writing as far as I'm concerned. That's writing, ladies and gentlemen. If, if we had, I wish we had James Gunn here right now so I could just tell him how damn talented he is. Um, but like I said, I know people. So, straight from Atlanta, ladies and gentlemen, from the set of another movie, I give you the great, the loaded, but not in a liquor way. Uh, James Gunn. Excellent to speak to you, sir. How are you? I'm good. I'm really good. You know, it's been a, an insane week for me with uh, between shooting and trying to release the show and everything else. So, but I feel good. Um, the incredible first world problems that you enjoy yeah. of, of making a massive, wonderful new mill, a movie while releasing a massive new wonderful TV show based on a massive wonderful movie, a massive wonderful movie that you just did last year. You're a busy yeah. cat, my friend, and rightfully I, yeah, so. Yeah, very busy. Yeah. Let's talk about where Peacemaker comes from. I absolutely love the show. When I first uh, saw the trailer, when I first heard there was going to be a spinoff, I was like, oh, that makes sense. He's cool. Um, fun character. You can go places with it. Uh, when I saw the trailer, I was like, oh, I can't wait. Superheroes cursing. Like, uh, I was almost cursing myself for like, why didn't I do this? Um, then I saw the show and once again, what, what you do insanely well is give us the populace entertainment that puts us in the seats and then you sneak a wonderful human story with a soul and emotion under it. And I did not suspect that that's what we were going to be having with Peacemaker. I thought it would just be a fun romp and it remains a fun romp, but you are having your cake and eating it too at the same time with this story, man. Uh, it is next level work. You're always a fantastic writer and a, and a clever one at, at the very least. But this, there's something coming out in this work, man, that like, it seems a little bit deeper and closer to home than we've even seen before. Where's it coming from? Well, I mean, I think it was a couple of things. I think number one, I just really wanted to work with John. But number two, a lot of the stuff I've dealt with is are sort of these fables. Like Guardians is a fable about childhood trauma that takes place in outer space and it's very emotional but it's also it's an outer space we don't have to deal with real humans uh but peacemaker has a little bit to do a little bit more to do with you know society today what's going on in our world what are the kind of people that are you know in our world and so dealing with that social stuff a little bit more i felt like peacemaker was a character who gave me an opportunity to deal with that and giving me the opportunity also to deal with the character of Leo Adebayo, who's played by Daniel Brooks, and the fact that two of them have this sort of, you know, beautiful friendship that they find because it's based strictly on their love or their like for each other as human beings. And um, and I thought that that was an interesting dynamic and maybe something that we should talk a little bit more about, about how people with very, very different belief systems can actually like each other. And I have people in my own life that are like that, people who you know, believe very differently than I do about politics, about this, about whatever. And, and instead of being a person that screams at people, <laughs> thinking that that somehow is going to change their mind, um, you know, can see somebody else's humanity despite their different beliefs. That's what really is on display when you watch the show. Um, you know, there's a cartoony level of violence and fun, but it's got this incredibly human... Uh, heart and soul. Um, I, as I watched the first episode and then went straight into the next three because they HBO Max dropped all the first three episodes at once. Mm -hmm. um, my impression I got, or let me let me ask you, when you went into Suicide Squad, were you thinking Peacemaker series at all? It occurs to me as like you're working with an actor who's so talented that you're like. This is a versatile action figure that I could do a lot of things with. He's fun, and he also knows how to play heart and warmth and stuff. Like, and plus, the character yeah. being larger than life, 
you know, you get to play with the archetypes of superheroes while playing with a classic superhero, not even one that you had to create yourself so that you can break down. Which was it? Chicken or the egg? How do we get to Peacemaker? Uh, the egg. I guess. That means <laughs> it was It was definitely John Cena. I mean, it was wanting to work with John again because, listen, this was, you know, it, the, the beginning of COVID when I decided to do this. I was lonely. John and I get along extraordinarily well. I thought he'd be a fun guy to make a TV show with. I trust him with my life. He's a truly good uh, individual with a lot of integrity. But I also thought, you know, I saw glimpses of what John was capable of in uh, Peacemaker. We talked a lot about who this guy was, where he came from, how he felt awkward when he's around everybody else, what his dad was like, you know, all of these things we talked about with with John. And then I saw glimpses of what John was able to do emotionally or dramatically that we didn't really get to deal with. You know, when we see the big moment in Suicide Squad without giving a major spoiler away, which anybody that sees Peacemaker is going to be spoiled. You know, there's this, this humanity in John that he brings to it. And I wanted to deal with that. I thought that is a seed for a whole, you know, a whole television series, really. The, um, the, you're handling the material with aplomb, uh, with somebody who clearly has not just affection for the genre. Like I said, you could have delivered you holding, you know, two DC action figures, smashing them together, cursing at each other, and that would have been like a wonderful show to watch, at least for me, right up my alley. The fact that you're making a show that like other people can get into, even if you're not into the superhero genre. Oh, thanks so much, man. And it's like, I, you know, I think one of the things is not thinking of the villains as villains while I'm writing, although that's hard with Augie Smith. But I just think of all these, these they're different opposing forces. I mean, somebody brought up to me the other day because I'm a big fan of, uh, of Annie Chang and, and Lachlan Monroe who play Fitzgibbon and Song, the, the cops that are on right. the trail of Peacemaker. And I said something about them the other day and somebody said, yeah, but they're kind of like villains because they're after the Peacemaker. And I'm like, what? And somebody said it today about Judo Master. Judo Master is a villain on Twitter. And I'm like, he's a villain? I'm like, oh, I guess he is. To me, he's not. I mean, he's got his reasons for doing things. And, you know, and, and Annie and, and, you know, I mean, Sophie Song and, and Fitzgibbon especially have their reasons for doing things. So I just think of them as all these opposing forces that have different desires that move against each other, you know? And for the show itself, I don't even really 100% think of it as, I think of the superhero costumes are just the gravy, you know? Because it really is about, you know, a, you know, my version of Adrian Chase, my version of Christopher Smith, Amelia Harcourt, you know, Leo Adebayo. It's about those people and a couple of them happen to wear these costumes, which are kind of ridiculous, really. Vigilante looks kind of cool. Uh, Peacemaker, you know, he's got he's got these little challenges in the uh, coolness department. But, I can't tell yeah. you how how beautiful I thought his his sustaining rationale for like, there's not a dove of peace on the gun, man. Like yeah. how important it was. Like the 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 mythology he built for himself, which is like that's what makes it okay to do these horrible things. That's some, that's some beautiful writing. Let's talk about, for one of the last things is, uh, and it's the thing that seems to have captured the imagination of people who haven't even perhaps watched the show yet, is your opening credit yeah. sequence. You defeating yeah, the skip yeah. button by putting together yeah. one of the most that's compelling right. opening sequences to a TV show since Laverne and Shirley, for heaven's sake, since yeah. we watched them skip <laughs> down to Shamil Shamazel. Where'd you get the idea, man? Where, where did, did, did you know early on? Was it the kind yeah, of self challenge? I mean, one of the things that excited me about doing the show was there's no rules. I mean, there's no rules whatsoever. They were gonna let me do whatever, uh, you know? So I'm like, I wanted a dance sequence. I did this, I did a movie called Super and I have an animated dance sequence at the beginning of that. That isn't so different from this version, but in this, I had a budget and a, an ability to do it live action. So. I wanted a way to tell the, first of all, I did, I wanted people to be able to see the names at the beginning and not yeah. skip over all those, you know, you know, Fred Raskin, the editor and Greg, you know, Greg Diari and Greg Featherman, our other editors and, uh, you know, all the people that work so hard on, on the show and not to be able to skip over their names, but also to let people know, don't, don't think you know what you're seeing. Don't, don't think this is, you know, another R rated superhero show. Don't think this is just this. Don't think it's that. Open your mind. It can be anything. And there are no rules here. Let's just go along for the ride. And so that was what I wanted to get across, you know, with uh, with the opening credits. 
whole sequence is is brilliant and fun to watch. Um, but for me, the big moment is uh, Mern and Harcourt come out. For some reason, that's the shot that I'm drawn yeah. to. They are so perfectly yeah, yeah. in sync. That's the best. Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. but the whole thing is absolutely well, also good. Joy. Jen has these great arms, and she's uh, and it's also she's an amazing dancer. So she's the one person that uh, Carissa Barton, who choreographed that bit, uh, she she gave Jen a little bit more to do than some of the other right. people because she's she's actually able to dance you know it's, John, it's john's a little bit more he's got his you know simple things that he's doing but it absolutely works and i'm i'm so fascinated by why it starts when it starts like five beats in was that you going like i know i'm going to end an opening cold opening with the opening chords yeah. of that song so that's, i gotta leave myself that's straight. right that's right. Yeah. Fantastic. That's, that's what it, it's fun talking to you about this stuff because nobody mentioned that sort of stuff. But I yeah, love yeah. it. It makes me so happy to see him standing there for the first like two seconds of music without moving. And at first I was like, is that a creative choice? And then I was like, it has to be him trying to like figure out in advance. And I love it. The other thing about the when the ending, did you did you know you were going to hold on them for like three seconds yeah. so that you see yeah, 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 yeah. people being people? Yeah. Yeah, it is yeah, that yeah. is brilliance, absolute yeah. brilliance and bliss. It's so human, man. It makes because first you're sitting there going, "That's pretty fucking impressive," but then when yeah. you see everybody like, it, it just yeah. it, it binds always, you to those I, characters. My favorite thing about I like I like the Olympics and I like uh, ice skating performances and stuff, but there's always that moment at the end of the ice skating performance with the <laughs> where they're frozen. Yes. <laughs> 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 you know, and sometimes they're they're happy because they just kicked ass, and other times, you know, they're they're beating the shit out of themselves because they didn't do very well. But they got to sit there with that smile and the out of breath and that little moment of humanity is it, one of my favorite things in, in ice skating. I I can't wait to watch uh, the rest. Uh, I can't wait to see it more. I it feels like it's something that you could return to again and again and again, I hope. I hope this ain't a one and done thing. Cause you yeah, know. yeah, we all want to do that. So we're, we're all, John and me and the whole crew, we're all into it, so. This is the highest uh, compliment I could possibly pay it. I never watch it and go, fuck, it should have been me. I watch it and go, fuck, this was made for me. Like, oh, thanks, it, man. it really feels like a show that like, oh my God, like had I never made a thing in life, this would be the show that I put everything down for it because that's the show I'm putting everything down for now. It's pitch perfect, man. I'm absolutely no, loving thanks, what you did. So glad Thank you, you so it. Much. Thank you for doing it. Keep making that piece. Keep guarding that galaxy, my friend. I will, Kevin. Thank you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Give it up for James Gunn, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for hanging out as I sit here and gush on Peacemaker. Peacemaker, watch it right now. Every Thursday on HBO Max, a new episode is dropping. You can watch the first three already. And you could watch the brand new one Thursday. No, episode four is dropping. Episode five, my prediction, I shall love it. I've loved it so far. And my God, it's only getting better. Peacemaker, ladies and gentlemen. Peace out. Ooh. This is the cat. Greetings, everybody. And welcome to the... AKA Ask Kev Anything. Every saga has a 10 year anniversary, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what happens when Jay and Silent Bob get old. I'm Kevin Smith. Cheers, you!